You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing a recap of SmackDown Live from 1226. Yes. Let's get to it. Let's go. All right. So the show opens up with Daniel Bryan coming out. Uh, last week, something strange had happened with uh, Dolph Ziggler. Dropped his pants in the middle of the ring. I mean, the belt <laughs> in the middle of the ring. He left it, and uh, so by all intents and pers- purposes, he, um, I guess, vacated the title. Yep. Um, so now, Daniel Bryan has no choice but to make a, a tournament to um, to find a new champion. Champion. Yes. <laughs> so um, At this point, Shelton Benjamin. Sorry. Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> Chad and Gable. Chad Gable come out and cut him off, and yeah. uh, basically they say that they want a tag title shot. Well, they said they don't care about the U.S. title; they're more well, concerned about the tag team right. titles. Um, and then they say that they want a title because mm-hmm. they want a title shot because right. they beat the Usos last week. Yep. And, and then, at that point, Rusev Day comes out mm-hmm. and says that well, we beat them two weeks ago, yes. and we didn't take the pin in the match. Yes, uh, we didn't lose at Clash of Champions, right? Yeah. And then the New Day comes out mm-hmm. and they say everything that. Or they, they talk about all of the reasons why they should have a title shot instead yep. of those two. Exactly. And then Daniel Bryan Says. decides that he wants to make the triple threat match to decide the number one contenders. And it's going to happen right now. And then we wait for the referee to come down. Yep, because this was another first hour with no commercial breaks. Yes. Um, but yeah, this was a uh, good match. It was a very, very good and long match. Yes. Uh, Usos were on commentary. Yeah. And Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable got the victory. Yeah, after their uh, their double power bomb yeah. deal off the top rope mm-hmm. um, on Big E, nonetheless. Yeah, that was a little surprising. Mm-hmm. But like you said, Shelton Benjamin is a big strong man. That's true. He certainly had no problem picking him up. But no. then again, Chad Gable probably wouldn't either. That's true. He is very strong. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So uh, up next, we have a very awkward. Backstage segment. Yep. Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon kind of just talking slowly and methodically to each other. Yeah. Um, Shane really didn't care for being compared to his father. Which but is then, fair. But then he talked about all the good things that he's done. Yeah. And how he's basically made WWE what it is today. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, then uh, what, Shane questions why he put the U.S. tournament together, right? Yeah, because he figured that it should just be Bobby Roode versus... Uh, Doug Baron Corbin since yeah. they were in the triple threat match. Yes, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Shane says that he wants it to be the Daniel land Bryan. of opportunity. That's what I meant. Daniel Bryan <laughs> wants it to be the land of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, so he wants it fair for everybody. Right, yes. And then Shane goes ahead and questions the main event mm-hmm. and wonders why he uh, puts... He, he he wonders if he's favoriting Kevin Owens by putting him in matches with the WWE champion. Yes, and then Daniel Bryan <laughs> says, well, this was one of the most intense feuds of the year, which you got involved in. It's true. And uh, he figured they should have one last match. Right, to close out the year. And Shane kind of just looked at him and said, okay. Yeah. And that was it. That was weird. Yep. So, um, uh, yeah. So then we get a preview of... Or of the Fashion Files, which is now a WWE.com exclusive. Yes. Um, so they show like a small clip of it on mm-hmm. the on the Tron. show. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, but it, basically the gist was the Ascension uh, got them a rematch against mm-hmm. the Bludgeon Brothers. Yes. That's what they got them for Christmas. Yes. Um, so that match happened next, and it was, for the most part, a squash match until the Ascension came out and got... Rizongo disqualified. Yeah. Um, but they saved the day. Yep. So we go backstage and who was it? Dasha probably. I believe so. And she was interviewing uh, the four of them, the Ascension, Rizongo, and uh, Rizongo, you know, kind of thankful that they got him out of the situation. And uh, the Ascension said, don't worry. You guys are going to face him again next week. Yes. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's going to happen again. They're trying to kill him. Uh, something like that. Um, but yeah, up next we have Ruby Riot versus Naomi. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Ruby Riot does a small promo before the uh, match, the, like the backstage, like fa- like face in front of the camera thing. Yeah. And she says that she is going to win the Royal Rumble, and Naomi's going to be the first one that she eliminates. eliminates. Yes. Uh, when we were talking about the Royal Rumble thing, she would be on the list of people that we don't want to win. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, um, <laughs> so. 
but Ruby ends up winning. Uh, uh, Naomi gets distracted by uh, Liv Logan Morgan and, and then Li- uh, um, Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan. Yes. Um, and then that allows Ruby to hit her with a riot kick. Mm-hmm. And uh, she pins her. Yep. After the match, they beat down Naomi. Charlotte comes out to help, but obviously the numbers game is too strong. Yes. And then our favorite group is back and the welcoming committee, right? Um. Well, they didn't, they didn't refer to them as that. It was so. the four women that were in the welcoming yeah, committee. Yeah, but if that's all the people, you know, <clears> that's really. Because they, they said that the rest of the women's locker room, so I at guess least they that's didn't refer true. to them as that. Yep. Um. So the four of them came out. Mm-hmm. They uh, actually were able to get the upper hand. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, the Riot Squad tried to run away, and then Tamina, like, attacked, I think, Logan. And then that's when they started brawling, and the Riot Squad eventually runs away. Yep. And uh, that was it. Yeah. And then we have an interview with Renee, in, or interviewing AJ Styles. Yes. And uh, he basically says that he can face anybody as the underdog. Or he faces is he is the un, they are the underdog. Anyone he faces is the under- will be the underdog against him. Ah, okay. Yes, because that's... he's the best. That's what he's interesting. Considering he was playing the underdog, you know. That's what he said. I can only tell you what all he right, said. All right, all right. I'm very confused. And, and he basically just said that he can handle anything that Owens can throw mm-hmm. at him. Owens and Zane can throw at him. Yep, that so. makes sense. So then we have. The first match in the tournament to crown a new U.S. champion, uh-huh. Bobby Roode versus Baron Corbin. You know, the match that should have just been for the title. Yeah, but I like tournaments. You like tournaments. Yeah, it's true. It's fun. Um, but yeah, Bobby Roode goes over here. Not really a huge surprise. But the way the match ended was a little bit of a surprise. A little bit. You don't see the stuff like that happen. No. Yeah, uh, Corbin went for his, uh, I guess, choke slam backbreaker. Yes, but... It, it makes sense. Oh, you, what do you mean? Because Baron Corbin always loses to roll-ups. Uh, I guess it's true. He lost to Sami Zayn twice, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. so uh, he he's able to evade. I guess he gets him up, but he slips out of the way. Mm. Um, and then he like does a sunset flip roll-up. And yeah. uh, that was gets it. the pin. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had another round one matchup with yeah. the gender versus ty dillinger yeah they set this up very strangely a little bit so, that's why i said i don't know why they didn't put brackets or anything like that at least to just show us who was yeah, it was so kind of a mystery what was going on yep i still think that they're just doing it by by on year the, yeah just going <laughs> yeah. all right go out there yeah you're gonna face him you're up yep say so, yeah, i didn't even know i was wrestling it's anymore. true uh not a surprise here the uh, former champion, Jinder Mahal, wins with the Kloss. Uh-huh. And it seems like he does not know how to pull that move off correctly because it looks different every time he does it. <laughs> or I should say his opponent lands different every time yeah. he does it. So is it just me, or would this have made sense to do before he won the, the WWE Championship? He should have just won the U.S. title, and that should have been it. Yeah, I know. That's it. It's true. Did not make any sense for him to run with the world title. The U.S. title would have made a lot more sense. It's true. Uh huh. But whatever. Yep. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, backstage, uh, Owens and Zane are interviewed uh, by I don't know, Renee, Charlie, Dasha. Dasha who cares? The other one. There's yeah. A, there is another one. Yeah. I don't remember her name. Um. Anyway, uh, Owens. No, has, this was Dasha. Okay. Yeah. Owens has a bottle of champagne. Mm-hmm. He says it's the one that uh, he tried to offer to Daniel Bryan last week, yep. but he refused it. Um. And then he just says, "That." Uh, Oh, oh, and then he talks about, I guess the reason why he had the champagne is that mm-hmm. he's, he wants to open it when, I was a little confused about that. I actually. don't know. Yeah, because he said, then he started talking about how Shane cost him the U.S. title. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then he, he said, says he's going to beat AJ. I guess he's going to. He's gonna... not just phenomenal. He's what, double phenomenal? Is <laughs> that, that, that is what he said. Um, <sighs> I guess he said he was going to open the champagne when he wins. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I get that. That's basically what yeah. I think the so the was, gist of it was. It was very strange. Yep. So then we get another backstage interview where Randy Orton is interviewed in full ring gear, even though he was not wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, and he basically said he's kind of tired of doing jobs for everybody else, and he's only looking out for himself. Not literal jobs, like you know, They're getting pinned. Losing, no. Yeah. Um, but he said he wants to focus on the Royal Rumble match, and he's obviously entered. And up comes Shinsuke and says, let's get ready to rumble. It was pretty funny. 
It, it was good. I liked the way that they yeah, did that. That was fine. That's um, all they needed. Although it does solidify the fact that those two are kind of a pair now. <clears throat> they always pop up near each other. Yeah. All right. So uh, now we have the main event. Uh, AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the ending was uh, AJ hits a suicide dive on Zane, which was meant for Owens, I guess. Right, yeah, he kind of moved out of the way. And then Zane gets, anno- uh, gets annoyed at him, so he distracts him. Well, AJ went back in the ring to go for a phenomenal forearm on Owens. Zane got on the, 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 the apron. apron. AJ went no, he hit the forearm. Did he hit the forearm? Yeah, he did. Oh, okay, right. He and hit then, the forearm. And then he distracted the referee. Yes, and that's because that's, that's yeah. when Shane walked out, right? Well, uh, he distracted the referee, and then I think the ref told him to get down. Mm-hmm. Then Shane came out to deal with him. The right. ref continued to be distracted. Right. Um, so AJ's pinning uh, Owens. Owens at this point, right? Yeah. Uh, AJ gets was up. Was he rolling says, him up, I think? No, he was just pinning just, him. I think he was down still. I thought he was rolling he him up. He might have hit but, him with something. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Um, he goes to pin him because mm. Owens was still laying down when AJ got up. Right. So um, he goes. The, he's dealing with the ref. Owens gets up, hits him with the super kick. Mm-hmm. Um, That's when Shane comes out. No, no, no. Shane, Shane was out already. Oh, okay. Hits him with the super kick. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I got my times. Yeah, uh, when Zane distracts the ref, that's when AJ gets hit because it was after the forearm. Oh, okay, yeah, he was yeah, just yeah. getting up from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shane comes out to get rid of Zane. Yep. Um, that's when AJ okay. went for the cover. Yes. <clears throat> so I was talking about the right thing. It's just the wrong wrong time. Events. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, he, yeah. He was dealing. The ref was dealing with Shane and Zane, uh, and then that's when Owens it's rolls up, up AJ. Owens. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He, okay. Yes, yeah. okay. I was mistaken mm-hmm. of what was going yes. on. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, he gets rolled... Uh, AJ gets rolled up by and, Owens yes. and then okay. counts to three. And Sammy and Owens celebrate. Yeah. And AJ walks up the ramp and kind of just looks at Shane with disgust or disgust look. And mm-hmm. that, that was that. Well, Shane also looked like oh, he... Oh, I'm had... sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, champ. He, I think that was his, the exact words he muttered yeah. to him. Yeah. He, uh, he might have messed up a little bit. Yeah. So... But yeah, that was SmackDown Live. Yes. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.